Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Let's actually find out from Tim, what is Novak Conversions? Where are you guys? What do you guys do? We are, this is actually our 51st year. We just had a, a 50th anniversary last year and did a big celebration. Um, we are in extreme northern Utah. If you know where Salt Lake City is, we're about an hour, hour and a half north of there. And we're just minutes from the Idaho border. Nestled in a nice little valley with beautiful big mountains on each side of us. And nice community, great place to work and a great place to Jeep. But we're all Jeep. That's all we do. Um, we have, since day one, we manufacture all the components to convert Jeeps to V8s or even just rebuild the existing transmissions and transfer cases, you know, from like a restoration standpoint. Um, but we manufacture um, all the components to put V8s in all the different Jeep models. Um, including the new JL, we'd be doing a doing one of those here in about a month or two, and it'll be in SEMA as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, that was going to be my first question. Are you guys doing, you know, is it specific Jeeps or is it all of them, including the new one? So you're saying you're getting ready to come out with some stuff for the new one? Yeah, the the, the new JL. Um, I know a lot of your followers, since the the whole Jeep and uh, gun world go hand in hand, a lot of us Jeep owners are gun owners and vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, we're probably aware of uh, Black Ops 4x4 out of California. Every Jeep, he owns just about every iconic Jeep made from the CJs and flat fenders on up to JKs. Well, he now has purchased a JL. He, in fact, he had, I think, the first one in the country. Flew out to Toledo, Ohio to buy it because he wanted it before anybody else did and then drove it home. And he's now got it with 49-inch tires under it and some big, heavy 70-series Curry axles under it. And uh, hmm. the next step after he's got that all buttoned up is to bring it up here and we're going to stuff up for those who are familiar with the chevy powertrains that's what the gm powertrains are really what we specialize in and i could go on for hours probably about the reasons why but we're going to put what they call a gen 5 engine and transmission in it it'll be a 6.2 liter uh, with an eight speed transmission they call it the 8l90 it's like what would come in three quarter and one ton trucks and and uh, it's a pretty stout setup, and it's going to make that Jeep a blast to drive. <laughs> That's all. Did you have a question here, Walter? Well, I'm just every. I, at what point does it not? Aside from the grill on the front, because <laughs> but at some point it it's not a Jeep anymore. When you everything is <laughs> everything, everything like those axles you mentioned, those are badass. So yeah, and the, and the drivetrain, and then. You know, by the time you get done, it's like, what happened to the Jeep? <laughs> the body and frame are still Jeep. <laughs> the skin, the skin is there, yes. But Jeeps is Jeeps. You know what? Okay, so Jeeps are a lot like the AR-15. They are they are Legos for grown-ups, right? Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, th this is the thing. And, and I think that um, there's so many aftermarket parts for Jeep. Are there really any just like regular Jeeps out there? Obviously, when some, maybe if someone's getting a new one, or they bought something fully loaded from the dealership, but lots of people really enjoy the experience of building up their Jeep and customizing it to what they want. Absolutely, you can personalize them as much as anything in this world. You know, I've always said, kind of along the lines of what you said, I've always said, uh, Jeeps are to guys in in you know mechanized guys as iPods are and iPhones are to to kids because. Everybody and their dog makes accessories for iPods and iPhones and all that, but you do it the same way. Everybody and their dog is clamoring to make whatever accessory they can for the newest model and the first one to market with this or the first one to market with that. And everybody that owns a Jeep always says, you're never done building your Jeep. There's always something you want to do to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 There's, a, there's always some other cool little part you see somebody else has got and you don't have. Absolutely. And we all know what Jeep stands for, right? Just empty every pocket. <laughs> well, I didn't know that, but yeah, that's not true. <laughs> gonna have to use that one now. Gonna have to use that one. I think there's every, like Walter and I go to SEMA show. I think I was asking you off air if you guys have ever been or if you're going to SEMA show. We um, have this year. This year it's happening. Okay, so this year you guys will be at SEMA show, and I think you're gonna be with what's the name of the um that that Jeep guy you were just talking about? It's four by four. We'll be in the the booth that we'll be in is the Vision Wheel booth. The vision wheel booth. Okay, cool. Yeah, when you know when you go to SEMA show, for anyone who's ever been, Walter and I have been there. Jeeps are the most prevalent vehicle at SEMA show. Yeah. Right or wrong, Walter? There's a lot of them. A lot yeah, of, a lot. Of, a lot of people making parts and pieces. Yeah, 
Yeah, you can pretty much get anything for a Jeep. There's convertible, like powered convertible tops. Right. You know, you you could this this. I, I mean, I just can't go into how many things exist yeah. for Jeeps. So you, you can you know you can go the if you like to have things luxurious and that kind of what uh, you can go yeah. real luxurious or you can go real like manly and have it where it actually works like a truck. Yeah. Know, so <laughs> uh, we saw what was the name of that? We saw this top at SEMA show um, last year that makes your Jeep look like a Range Rover. Remember that? Yeah, it, that? it extended the roof. It, 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 it increased the roof height inside. Yeah. Yeah. The headroom and stuff like that. Yeah. So there's a whole bunch of things. Now, let me ask you, Tim, how popular is the uh, the doing the V8 conversion? How many of you guys done? Oh, you know, to be honest with you, we've sold the product to do it in kits. Well, individual components or kits over the years, far more than we've done installs. We actually just a couple months back, uh, or a few months back earlier this year, opened our own install bay. And that's actually where I'm sitting. You can see our brothers from Brownells poster back there. Yes, right shout back. out to Brownells. <laughs> right. But they, they, those guys are great, aren't they? Absolutely. But we're just now, basically just now, getting into the install portion of it. Typically in the past, we've done it for R&D purposes and refinement and things like that. But... Uh, we've over the years, our salesmen keep saying that they got guys asking if we'd install it because who better to install it than those who developed it? You know, right. so I right. said it's a revenue stream for us, and we always want to give our employees uh, more benefits and, and make their lives better. So let's do it. So we jumped in full bore, and as you can see, we're doing conversions now. Oh, okay, cool. So um, I'm trying to remember how you guys have been around for a while, right? Um, when did you say you? Years. 51 years. Okay, so in that time, you've been selling the kits to yeah. convert it, right? Because that's what the company was originally started. How many of those kits do you think um, you guys sold? I, I, would, rough... I would say 10,000. <laughs> it's in the thousands. Thousands. Okay, cool. So and then, and so now you guys are actually getting into doing it there. I know you do have a video on your um, YouTube channel. Do you want to just tell people real quick what's your social media? How can they get in touch with you guys? Yeah, absolutely. So... Uh, Facebook is simply Novak Conversions, and we haven't really supported that platform a whole lot until the last uh, six to 12 months, maybe, if even that. Uh, but we're being more active now on Facebook. But uh, Instagram, we've been really active on and, and had a great response, quite frankly. You can pretty much track uh, business from Instagram, uh, depending on the quality of the post. But uh, we're at Novak Jeep Conversions, and then I run my own uh, Tim uh, underscore Novak Jeep Conversions. Okay, cool. And, uh, we just post a lot of stuff on there that guys want to see, you know, uh, bills that are in progress, uh, what it takes uh, to R&D something and make it fit. And a lot of these guys are really interested in, in the hardcore aspects of it instead of just the finished project and what it looks like. So okay. we, we try to give everybody as much information as we can. Okay, cool. So the, the thing um, that, that I really want to know here is uh is it is it difficult to put this in you know what's the skip what's the <laughs> so if you're if you're like a, if you're not mechanically inclined like me and if you don't um have really the tools and stuff like that is you know, no bona no no bona no, no no it's not gonna work if that's the case you don't want to do it you want to bring it to us uh, we even arrange shipping nationwide we're always arranging shipping and having it brought to us and you know a lot of guys will fly out and drive the, the finished product home. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say before. Um, I know on the YouTube channel, I saw uh, Yeti and, Lo, uh, and, um, Yolo. Yolo. And, and Yolo come out there, and yeah. uh, they did their own conversion. I think they limped into, into, your, uh, you know, <laughs> in, into, your, into your shop there to get it done. They um, did. Yeah, that was cool. That was actually cool to see. Those are good guys. They are great guys and excellent brand ambassadors. It was kind of funny how that all came about. Do you want me to kind of give a little background? Yeah, yeah. Tell folks out there what, what exactly happened with Yeti. If you don't know Yeti and Yolo, explain explain who who those guys are. I don't really know. I saw What's the video that? thing, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeti and Yolo are a, a great a, a great couple. They're two people that are they're both from California. They met through social media. Um, both hardcore jeepers, both of them, and that kind of brought them together. But. Uh, they kind of decided to just leave their lives. You know, they, they had good, well-paying jobs in California, but just knew there was something more out there for them. And so these guys live full time out of their Jeeps now. And they've got the tent top, the, the rooftop mounted trailer or tent, I should say, and the trailers and they're fully outfitted. Uh, they're great brand ambassadors for us and any other company as well. And so it was really funny. Um, 
I, I noticed on Instagram, I don't even remember how I came across Yeti, but that time that they were out in Wyoming, they were that's about a couple hours from us is all. They buried their Jeep in mud. They they basically ruined the transmission. And uh, I so I just I just said, hey, we're not too far away. If you need some help, just reach out to us. Be glad to help. I left it at that. And uh, a while later, a few months, six to eight months later, I got a, a message from Yeti one night saying that uh, they're going to compete in the 36 hours of U URI event in North Carolina, and they're going to compete in the compete in the pro class. And they wanted to be the only team that drove their rig to and from. You know, they didn't fly in and have a, a crew bring their their semi trailer with their truck and a crew and all that. Yeah. They're a two man team and they do everything themselves from repairs to uh, everything, training and, and the event. So they asked if we, if we wouldn't mind helping out, we've got a transmission that they burn up in Wyoming and it wouldn't make it the full distance. <laughs> and I got that on a Sunday night, late at night. And I told my wife, I thought, you know, this would be kind of cool. You know, we could, we could build a what they call a 32 RH transmission. It's a three-speed, you know, non-overdrive transmission. It came in those TJs, 9704 Jeeps, and and uh, we could rebuild the transmission for them and help them out and get them back to, you know, North Carolina from San Diego. Um, and then I thought, man, he's never had overdrive though. It'd probably be a lot easier to drive that thing on the highway with overdrive. So we could do a 42 RH and. But then you're talking about a whole, you know, wiring change and a, a computer change, and you're still stuck with a crappy Jeep powertrain that's got 200,000 miles or whatever it was on it and has trouble pulling that trailer. So the thought came to me, you know what? We could go all in here, and we could we could put an LS engine and transmission combination in that and, and really do it up nice for them and, and make it a reliable, powerful rig. And then uh, so I, I sent a text that Sunday night to a few of my coworkers and, and – uh, leadership folks like me and said, you know, I got this idea. Let's talk about this in the morning, but formulate your thoughts. And uh, we got here the next morning and everybody was like, man, this is awesome. We should jump all in on this, even our owner. And so that's what we did. And, and you know, we, we kind of copied the, one of the episodes, I think it was, was it Dirt Every Day or one of those shows where they, they went to a, I think it was a Jegs and in their parking lot, they bought an old Caprice or Impala or something, and they bought a crate engine and everything it took to make a hot rod out of that car and did it in the parking lot, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, I think that was dirt every day. Um, yeah, Fred? One, one of those shows. Yeah, I've seen that, yeah. Yeah, okay. So that was that was kind of where we started with it. They messed up that parking lot. <laughs> I bet they did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so one of my coworkers said, you know, well, what if we do that, but we change it up a bit and we have them do their own conversion because if they're going to be competing in this event, they need to have, know how to fix their own rig. So if we have them do their own conversion and we film it and, you know, and, and put it on YouTube and all these kind of things. So we, we just ran with that. And so we put together a really nice powertrain for them. And uh, I don't know if you've seen the video or pictures of it, but uh, you can check it out on our YouTube channel. And it turned out really nice. Um, it's, it's reliable. It's got more than enough power. And when he was uh, competing in that 36 hour event, people were amazed at how fast he could drive that rig through the course and how well he can handle it. And so it worked out really well. Yeah. For, for, um, for all the guys out there, you should, you should definitely check out Novak conversions on YouTube. I think it's YouTube slash Novak conversions, right? I believe so. Yeah. Um, and Yeti and Yolo, if you don't know, I met them at the uh, Brownells event that I did. I think that was like way back last year. And you probably see them in my videos, as well as uh, videos from the other folks that are out there. These are gun guys as well, you know. They're Big time. yeah, they're into guns and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. They're I, I I still think that um, Yeti stalked Yolo, then hypnotized her. You know, <laughs> you would think, I mean, wouldn't you? Yeah, I don't know how exactly. No, no. They, they, you, 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 you keep saying so guys. You keep saying, <laughs> saying guys. There's one guy. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though, that guy has cooked for me before and i think he just winded her and dined her with his ability uh, to hmm. yes yeah he's a good but these guys actually lived a life when we were doing the brownells event um i think the last thing we did is we spent the night on the beach and um because we went fishing it, during the day so everything we caught we brought back to the beach and um yet he cooked everything you know he's a great he's an excellent cook uh, you Excellent. know, they're really, yeah, they're really, really cool people. I don't know. I mean, it probably seems like, oh, yeah, you know, said, but, th but those guys are really cool people. So really, yeah. what do you want me to say, Walter? Uh, Nothing. Nice. Uh, 
a nice young man and a young lady. No, I mean those guys. It's like yeah, I say, I, I watched the video. There's 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 somebody there who's not a guy. No, there's nothing. There's nothing guy-ish. <laughs> no, no, I'm gonna say one of, those, one of those ain't a guy. <laughs> yeah, no, she's not. She's not. But she's real. She's they're, they're really good people. It's like you know, uh, I mean, I cannot overstate it. They're really they're really good folks, and they're actually living like that whole overlanding that uh, the adventure thing that lots of people out there say they're gonna do. These guys actually live on the road. It's yeah. It's not, it's not that easy to do. You gotta. Uh, uh, unfortunately, it still takes a. Uh, Money to, yeah. to they're drive incredibly it. committed to what they do. Incredibly yeah, yeah. committed. And you know, as far as a brand ambassador, like they represent other brands as well and they'll test products and things like that. I have never seen uh, people that represent products so well test them thoroughly and give honest feedback on them, but they will never disparage a company's name that they represent. And they're just some really down to earth, honest, good people. Yeah. They're, they're, they're good folks. You guys should check that out. I think it's a good story. There's a good story in there about how they met and all that kind of stuff. So, all right. So basically someone like me, not, not capable of doing this, got to send it into you. <laughs> well, right? you that's a lot easier. It's, it, 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 instead of having to have somebody come and fix what you didn't get right. Yeah. It's not, it sounds like <laughs> it's not, yeah, it's not plug and play. Yeah, exactly. And you need some tools. Let me ask you something, Tim. How, how come? Why do you think that Jeep never, you know, hasn't done this? Like, why hasn't Jeep made these options available? You know, I've, I've questioned this for years and I, I always say it whenever a new model comes out. I just say how grateful I am. They're too dumb to put a big, powerful V8 in it. <laughs> um, e e EPA. <laughs> yeah, but we make it burn California, clean. California, EPA. Yeah, yeah there is yeah. that. Yeah, cafe standards, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All that, all that terrible stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that stupid caf cafe standard from California. And I know you're a California guy, Tim. Sorry, but California no. is ruining the world. <laughs> I escaped many, many years ago. Yeah. So, I mean, I, <clears throat> I'm surprised that they, you know, I think they really. They should have done it, but they haven't done it. Obviously, that leaves a, an opportunity open for you, right? Um, you know, and sure. and that's the thing that we're about here in America. So, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, always, you know, being able to make it the way you want it versus the way they want it. You know, I mean, yeah, and that's that. Uh, that I was going to ask you when you do the LS uh, LS swaps, the aluminum LS or cast iron LS, both, all of the above. Depends yeah. on how much money you want to spend. Uh, you know what? There's there's some of the uh, – well, in fact, I don't know if you can see over my shoulder here. This You see that nice pretty engine behind me there? Right, right. Uh, that's a, a TJ chassis. We actually took that to the Salt Lake Off-Road Expo a couple months ago, and we took the body off of the TJ so that we could just have a rolling chassis with the whole conversion powertrain in it so guys that, that are do-it-yourselfers and, and want and can do it themselves can actually see how doable it is, really. Right. It, it's really not that hard when you have some mechanical skills. Maybe the hardest part is probably uh, welding the mounts in, you know, placement and welding. Yeah. And yeah. then and a lot of electronics now is plug and play with harnesses and stuff like that. So, yeah, we we rework the GM harness and customize it so it fits right in your Jeep uh, in, in this particular situation. And it's plug and play with about, I believe it's about six wires to solder. And that's about and it. Is it tunable? The electronics tunable in there? Okay. Absolutely. In fact, that's what a lot of shops have been finding out they like about us is that some of the other companies out there that do LS swaps and things of that nature, um, what you get is what you get. Um, you can never change anything because of the way they've configured it. But, you know, we'll put a bigger cam in it for you if you want. We'll do a custom tune on it if you want. Um, the, the sky's the limit. Supercharger, it doesn't matter. Yeah, what it all depends on. how much, you know, how much money. Yeah, you yeah. well, that's the next question. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, what price levels are we looking here? So, you know, let's say I want all positions. <laughs> you know, I want it. I want it fully blown out, tuned up. You know, um, well, like what am I looking at here? You know, you know, Pr it, price is not an object kind of guy <laughs> that comes in there and say, "I want the most." What's the most power we can get, and what would that cost? Dude, there's there are so many options available. I don't even think we have enough time tonight to go over it. But <laughs> you can do, you know. If you're just talking about the LS platform, there's Gen 3, Gen 4, and Gen 5 that refers to the different year ranges and the changes they made on them in there. 
Um, and sometimes, depending on the year of the vehicle and the emission standards where you live, you might be required to use a certain one. A lot of places that have emission standards, you have to use the same year or newer than the yeah. The we, don't we, yeah. Just I so have. you know, just so you know, Tim, we live in Florida. Florida has no standards. <laughs> <laughs> they, they got rid of emissions testing when they found out it didn't make any difference. <laughs> no standards. Yeah, the standards are real. Have you ever seen Florida on the news? <laughs> well, um, all of your hair just blows out to sea, anyways, right? <laughs> yeah. So, like, you know, I mean, I, I obviously I know there's lots of different options and prices and stuff like that, but just for someone watching this interested, I'm trying to see like. What's the real high end, you know, dream? And then maybe also give us something on a low end that someone could do, uh, you know, as like a entry level project, maybe in the middle kind of a deal, you know? Sure. You know, I think probably on an entry level, and once again, it there, there's some variables involved there. Um, you'd probably be looking 20 to 25 grand for a full powertrain conversion um, mm -hmm. running out the door. Um, and you know, if, if anybody saw that uh, the Brownells build that we did, it's a, a 2000, what was it, 2010, I believe it was, a JK, JKU, they call them a four door. We did a um, LS3 that was 500 horse LS3. We did a custom tune on it, of course, but a 6L80, that's a six speed transmission. And then we built the transfer case for it. They call it a 241J. It's what would come in those Jeep JKs that are the non Rubicon edition. Hmm. And uh, and then we did Terraflex heavy duty axles, some 60 series axles from Terraflex that are amazing. Um, they call Locker. it a high pinion, so that, yeah, the pin, yeah, lockers front and rear, absolutely, ARVs, um, as well as uh, a high pinion, both front and rear, so it gives you a lot better ground clearance. Yeah. Drive shafts are up higher, uh, less, less damage potential if you're climbing over rocks, you know. Um, full Terraflex suspension on it. I, I wasn't joking when I said we cut everything off of that frame. So it's all new brackets, uh, control arms, everything. And they call it a long arm kit. So the, those control arms are a lot longer and allows a lot more travel and flex out of those axles. You'd be amazed if you could see what that thing would flex out to. But uh, so, you know, something like that with all the doodads we did, um, if I remember right, that would probably run somebody closer to the $60,000 mark by the time you get that far into it. But the sky's the limit. Yeah, I, I mean, that's pretty much approaching like monster truck. No, like, no, no, not. no, not really. No, <laughs> no. It, could, it could be worse than that. It really, was. Uh, hey, I mean, guys, you get to go for a ride in that on that convoy across America with the Brownells guys. I hope they let you in it because it is the smoothest thing. I was sitting in the passenger seat while we were data logging, and Yeti was driving, and uh, I just told him to mash it so it'd go through all the gears and we could get some good data for the tuner, you know, and and we hit 111 miles an hour in no time. I put it on my Instagram account. And I had to back out of it because of traffic. And then all of a sudden, a cop come the other direction. But uh, mm -hmm. there was a lot more to give. And it was we were both noticing how smooth it was. It wasn't rough riding. There wasn't a ton of vibration. It just it got up and went. Oh, awesome. Yeah, that's good. For those, you know, in uh, where, where's uh, uh, Brownells is in uh, it's Iowa. Iowa, right? Yeah. Iowa. Yeah. Those, those massive mountains in Iowa. <laughs> That they're gonna have to commute through to get to work every day. <laughs> Massive mountain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Amber, no, wait. That's, uh, yeah, yeah I, I'm looking forward to it though. I'm looking forward to driving it. I don't know if they will let me drive it. You know, I might have to like swap keys or something like that with them. But I'm, I'm I'll be happy to do it.